Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering NetApp Insight 2017. Brought to you by NetApp. Coming to you live from Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, you're watching nonstop coverage of Net, NetApp Insight 2017 on theCUBE. I'm joined this evening, it's almost over, with Brian Stuckey, <laughs> VP of Infrastructure and Operations with Cerna. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks for having me, Keith. So now, you're, you're officially now a CUBE alum. You've not been on the CUBE before, no, right? No, this is my first time. All right, so we'll go, we'll go easy on you. You are a NetApp customer. I really appreciate you taking the time to come out and talk to us. It's been an interesting show so far. What have been the highlights for you as a NetApp? Uh, you know, just getting exposure to everything that NetApp's doing today, as well as all the, you know, the, the supplier ecosystem that's part of the storage business, um, learning the different uh, areas of business that NetApp is wanting to take uh, their core kind of capabilities and expand upon them, and, and how they can really enable us with our, we're, what we're doing with data uh, within, within healthcare and what we're doing um, you know, across our solution set. So healthcare has been a particular interesting set of challenges in storage and data in general with GDPR, all of the, uh, the regulatory challenges that we, you face in healthcare. What has been one of the things that resonate with you most with the data fabric and data vision that NetApp has laid out? Well, you know, the, the tool set necessary to, to, to manage the volume of data is, 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 really, is really where we need to be because the healthcare data is exploding, continues to explode. There's not real great guidance as to how long, uh, from a regulatory perspective, that, you know, um, that uh, you know, our customers and our clients really need to retain data, so we wind up retaining data forever. Um, you know, even if it's seven years, you can look at seven years of a, uh, you know, an infant heart rate uh, digital past their 18th birthday. We're, we're sitting on that data for 25 plus years. So, as you can imagine, the, the amount of data is exploding. Uh, we have to be able to store, we have to be able to manage, we have to be able to tier that effectively, and then have it available to our clients, uh, you know, whenever they need it in order for them to run their business. So, let's talk a little bit about that tiering of data. What mediums do you guys use to tier that data? Is it cloud, is it mainly on-prem, private cloud? What's the medium and methodology? Uh, primarily, we're, we're using on-prem media, um, you know, anywhere from you know, flash all the way to, to spinning. Um, you know, thankfully, tape in our world, for the most part, has gone by the, world, by the wayside. Um, but you know, we are aggressively looking at, at cloud for a, for a number of use cases, uh, and you know, in looking at some of the promise of what we can do with data, long-term cold storage, some of the things that are out there uh, available from a public cloud perspective, and really looking at it as an opportunity for for data mobility, data archiving, and all sorts of uh, you know in interesting opportunities kind of. Uh, you know, arise from that. But, you know, being in our industry, uh, you know, we have to be very sensitive to the type of data, how we go about that journey, um, and really recognizing, at least from our perspective, it's not necessarily our data, it's our client's data. Right. Um, they have to know where their data is, uh, as well as, you know, at the end of the day, it's you and I's data as well, right? Um, we're, the, we're the folks at the end of that, uh, those bits on the disk. So, um, from that perspective, uh, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, you know, we are looking at all of them, um, but we need to, to be very careful and calculated about how we go about that. So, the explosion of uh, data, can you talk more about the sources of that data? Is it traditional data coming off of imaging devices, medical devices, is it IOT data? Where, where are the various sources um, of data? I, I think the short answer to that is yes. Um, <laughs> it's coming from everywhere. Uh, we've got IOT data uh, now that's coming from you know, all the bedside medical devices that exist out there. Uh, you know, I mentioned the you know, heart monitors, pumps, you name it, uh, the, the land of healthcare is, is the land of IOT when we start to get out into our clients. Uh, hospitals and hospital systems. Um, you know, we look at the core databases that we run our business on. Um, from that perspective, you know, more and more data is being collected about uh, you know the the patients that are in the hospital, uh, you know, the wellness visits out at the client, out at the you know clinics and all those things. All that data is growing. Imaging data has always been um, you know explosive. You know, every every time there's a new um, 
innovation in the imaging space. You know, you went from a X number slice of a CT scan to a you know 120 slice CT scan, and all the clinicians no are, are very yeah. happy. Like, no oh, one that's that's wonderful. No one wants less definition. If you, it's if like you give them more definition. It's like the burst will, button yeah. on your iPhone, yeah. right? Yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's oh, that's wonderful. Well, you just created you know, thousands of more pictures just like that. So all that data has to be stored somewhere um, and we are the landing spot for that data and we have to be able to handle it. So, the, they, you know, technology shrinks, but it doesn't seem to shrink fast enough for storage. So physical space, how have you guys managed like just the, from an agility perspective, having enough data center space and uh, to just accommodate the explosion of data? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing challenge we have. We're, we're constantly uh, you know, looking at our, at our growth projections, our storage projections. How can we you know, use data services, compression, dedupe, all the other capabilities in order to continue to reduce that data footprint um, yeah, it's it's just it's an ongoing it's an ongoing challenge and, and battle, and you know we're really reliant on on experts in the storage industry to kind of help us figure out ways in order to be more efficient with how we store that data. Um, you know, challenging for us is it's not only that one set of data. You know, some of that data gets moved into Hadoop clusters. Some of that data gets you know replicated for high availability in DR. So you know what what was once a single piece of data now is replicated you know, many, many times. So, you know, that explosion of data is also the different ways we have to consume that data. So, you know, one of the biggest things that we can do or hopefully will achieve over time is, you know, how do we reduce that footprint of data? How do we make that data reusable for multiple applications, multiple capabilities, without having to do the massive replication of all that data across our footprint? So you've been in that app customer for some time, I assume. Yes. So, what have been the, the as they're transforming into this data-driven organization, what have been some of the changes that you as a customer have noticed and appreciated the most? Well, I think that we've seen um, you know, NetApp transform from you know, what was traditionally their filer business uh, 10 years ago, that's what they were known for, and quite honestly, that's how we entered into the NetApp relationship. Um, and they've, they've continued to progress with more interesting um, solutions that exist out there, not only for you know, storage targets for us, um, but things that they're doing from a storage target from a cloud perspective, things that they're doing uh, as it relates to uh, storage infrastructure management and data management in general. Uh, those are all very interesting solutions that you know, we're looking forward to continue to take advantage of. So, hospital tech usually, or at least infrastructure, doesn't move too quickly. Yep. You know, you kind of make an investment and you leverage that investment for a long time because stability is most critical for you. As you're looking at some of the newer announcements, either this morning or throughout the week, the past couple of weeks, what has been some of the technologies or announcements that have excited you the most that make you want to kind of push that envelope a little internally and say, yeah, you know what, it may be worth the migration or the risk of migration to go to this new platform? Yeah, we're constantly looking at, at new platforms and how do we get from where we are today, constantly modernizing our infrastructure, uh, making sure that we are uh, you know, providing the, the highest availability, the most performance solutions for our clients. Um, you know, we're in a competitive space. They want to make sure that, you know, that their systems are running optimally. Um, and so, you know, as we look at the announcements and, and things that, that NetApp's doing, you know, not only is it that actual, those, those new solutions that you know, come with all the new bells and whistles, but it's, it's the overall, how do we look at the entire storage footprint? So the, the concepts around data fabric and NetApp and what they're trying to achieve from a, a visibility across your entire data footprint, um, those are very interesting to us and you know, to me personally, and we'll continue to look at ways to exploit that. So uh, the data is, uh, uh, George shared, the uh, NetApp CEO shared a very personal story uh, on stage yesterday of how data helped save his son's life. Being able to have medical professions have access to deep data and the ability to uh, come up with the, just the right treatments for his unique situation. When you talk about competitive landscapes, what are some of the competitive attributes of healthcare and uh, IT in general that you that that are on your list of priorities to make sure that you guys are providing the level of service that your patients uh, deserve yep. and while providing the uh, level of efficiency that the uh, operations requires to be an efficient competitor. Yeah, so I, I, a few items there from a competitive landscape, I think, um, you know, 
it's not good enough anymore to have a, a, a digital platform to store and retrieve data. Our clients want to get insights out of that data, whether it be how they're delivering care, um, whether it be uh, you know, the efficiency of, of the, the, the various care delivery models that they're, that they, they're, they're leveraging. They want to measure the effectiveness of their clinicians. Um, and they also want to make sure that they are, uh, as, the, as the landscape of healthcare and reimbursement changes, there's going to be a lot more emphasis on making sure that they do not uh, you know, have a, a patient leave and then within 30 days come back uh, from a readmission standpoint, there's going to be there's a lot of pressure in order to to make sure that the right things are done for the first time and leveraging the data that we have stored, the analytics that we are able to provide, getting the right data to the clinicians at the right time is really is really paramount uh, to what we're trying to achieve. And you know, from a competitive standpoint, um, unlocking some of those capabilities is really what we see moving and keeping us in front. So, what are some of your biggest takeaways coming from Net? App Insight to your staff as you help them meet that mission of better healthcare? Well, I, in my space, in, in the data center operations space, uh, predominantly, you know, our, we, we have to maintain a very high standard of ability and performance. And it's paramount to us, you know, for us to stay on top of where the industry's going, who are the leaders, uh, what are the options, what are the technologies available to us in order to make sure that we are able to have a, a very capable platform that you know, every, all, the, all the folks within Cerner then can build really interesting solutions on top of to deliver to our clients. Well, Brian Stuckey, VP of Infrastructure and Operations at Cerner, we really appreciate you coming on theCUBE, sharing your story about Cerner and how you guys are helping uh, move forward your mission of providing better healthcare. That's it for this segment of theCUBE, Manalee Bay, NetApp Insight 2017. Stay tuned for our closing statements in session. Thank you.